everybody, Vic McCarty here, and thanks for joining us. We are down at Clinch Park Marina near the beach, uh, near paddle boards, near kayaks and canoes, because we're talking to Sarah Hunt, who is a paddle board explorer, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, we found you on Facebook and all the stuff that you do. Can you kind of explain, though, what you do with regards to paddle boarding? Because it's a little different than just the fitness angle. For me, I like to explore new waters and new areas. I've always been a little bit more of an adventure. And for me, it's like seeking just new experiences in life. So I can be mobile. I can probably run into channels I couldn't do with other things like a boat or just obviously walking. So. Yeah, and you showed up in your Jeep with your paddle board. So you see something, how long does it take you to disembark and get all that going? Oh, it just depends on the adventure itself, the logistics, where I have to launch, you know, where I might have to like right. paddle to in right. and out. So that's something that's part of planning. Okay. It depends on them. And you were telling me that you are a year round, all weather paddle boarder. That I am. I've been known to explore, but I've also been known for my all season paddling here on the Great Lakes. Okay. And I said to you, middle of February, you're out on your paddle board. I am. Good God. Why? It's just a passion for me. As long as you have the right gear and you are consistent with checking weather yeah. and you're just safe practices, right. you're good to go. Right. All right. And uh, you said you'd like to talk a lot about safety and I wanted to get into that with you. Uh, what can you say to people? Because we do run into these stories where people are either not out there with the proper gear you know, they're getting tired and they're getting lost and they're getting blown by the wind. What can, what, how do you address all that? Well, there's a few things to know about paddleboarding. First of all, keeping up to date on the conditions up to you launch, where the weather's um, directions, uh, where the currents are going. Um, for me, I always advocate wear your leash, wear some type of PFD, yeah. um, personal flotation device. Um, also, just knowing like if the winds pick up, it's okay to just sit down on your board and paddle along, you know, drop to your knees. That's the biggest point. People just get a little overwhelmed and then they get exerted with, you know, their energy's gone from paddling right. so hard and it's just drop down your knees. Your board's a flotation device. Um, you know, just do your best to stay along shore. Um, and at one point, you know, you just kind of got to go with it and just put your energy into it and get back to land. But definitely knowing what you're in and involved in with the winds and the conditions is the best. Now, do you have some sort of device that can find you? Or you gives your gives off your position. I do not. Oh, now wait a minute, Sarah. Uh, shouldn't shouldn't you because of what you do? I probably could invest in something along those lines. Right. However, I do not. Um, from my experience, you know, I was using my phone. I've stopped taking my phone with me on paddles. But other than that, I'm always you know very vocal about where I'm going with somebody, and I'm pretty good about logistics figuring out my logistics so I'm not going in situations where right. I don't feel like I can handle it right. for sure so uh, last time I took my phone out with me on a kayak guess what happened what <laughs> you lost it to the lake <laughs> my uh, one of one of my many phones is at the bottom of spider lake so that's been my situation I'm three in and I'm just <laughs> financially I cannot do that and anymore. I was a chucklehead because the 10 year old wanted to go out and I wasn't wearing a flotation mm -hmm. device which was wrong okay so you got to make sure you wear some sort of flotation device and proper gear and, and don't be silly about weather conditions don't be silly about really no that's the number one point we've had these crazy storms come in right they, they yeah. blow in pretty fast have you ever been caught in a storm the one that really did the damage in Glen Arbor, I was actually yeah. planning on being on the water and I checked radar right before and right. it came in about 30 minutes before they predicted. So, All right, because you've paddle boarded in a lot of different areas, best place to paddle board? Right here in northern yeah. Michigan. Sent you a fastball right over the middle of the plate on that one. <laughs> I advocate yeah. for that all the time. That's why I live here. View, what is it? The view of the bay for half the pay. <laughs> uh, now, the longest distance you've paddleboard? Oh, wow. Probably 12 miles just in one excursion. Throughout the day, probably a good 20 plus miles. Yeah, I, I'm not going to do that. I, I would just, I would be lying down on my paddleboard and weeping. Thank you, Sarah. It's a great time. You can come weep and join me one time. <laughs>
<laughs> in Traverse City at Clinch Park talking paddleboarding. I'm Vic McCarty, My News 26.